Hey mom, good morning, workout family. Jackie, Pilates, 45 minutes. Just a mat, that's all you need. So we're gonna lie down on our back, come down when you're ready. If anybody is new, I'll just show you how to find neutral. Most of you, if you've been doing these classes now each week, will know. So just finding the hip bones. Some of us will have a natural tilt in the spine, so where the bottom sticks out slightly. If you overemphasize that, think about that arch through the back. And then think about the opposite, where you tuck the pelvis all the way under, squeeze the glutes, that's the opposite position. You want to find somewhere in between the two. All right, so when we're lying down now, you might just want to have a little go at that, finding your neutral pelvis. By keeping the um, pelvis in neutral throughout the practice, it just is safer for the back and also helps support you when you're working your core. So Pilates are going to work the, the abs, the core, the muscles and the waist, so the obliques and also the posterior chain, the back of the body as well. So I tend to split the class into three little sections. So of course you can do as much or as little as you feel you want to do this morning. So let's just find our neutral again. So if you are new, as I say, either just touching the hip bones can help feel that pelvis or just sliding the fingers just underneath the back. So when you have that arch, you'll find that you are, you have a little bit of gapping in the lower back. You can find a little bit of space to slide the hands and the fingers underneath. And then when you find that position C, you'll find that you're imprinting the back into the mat. So the lower back compresses completely. So that's where you've got no space to slide your hands underneath. And then you want to find position B. All right, so just have another go at just rolling pelvic tilts. These are called just rolling through the two positions of the pelvis. And it might help you just to get familiar with the own, your own sort of way of um, holding yourself, like in your day-to-day -day life, I mean, like what your back is like, what your posture is like, whether you've got a natural arc or a natural curve in the spine. It doesn't matter, but it just helps to, to have that awareness. Okay, so from there, we're just gonna bring our knees in over our chest. Just take a little gentle movement here, just to massage through the sacrum, just to find that contact with the back of the body, but also with our core. So engage the core here and just move. You can do circles, you can go from side to side. And then we're gonna come into some toe taps to warm up and to begin. So just Letting your head, neck, upper body be completely relaxed on the mat and then just bringing the knees up over the hips. So one way to test is just to stretch your arms out and the back of the heel of the hand just grazes the top of the thigh bone or the below the knees and that's your position. Just be mindful that you don't bring the knees in too close, that will be um, well, it'll be cheating and also it will mean that the exercise will more, move more into the hip flexors rather than the lower abdominals. So we're just going to toe tap ever so lightly down to the mat. Just alternate legs. So feel that engagement. Check the position of your lower back. And make sure that you're breathing, you're not holding on to the breath here. So you want to think about drawing the navel in towards the back of the spine. So you've got that constant support and tension there. So let's do four more of these. So you're very lightly touching down with the toes. Great, and then keeping the legs where they are, so you've still got that engagement. 
Let the arms float out in line with your shoulders. You can turn the palms to face up so you're not tempted to push through the floor. And then from here, we're just going to do our, our windmill. So keep the legs softly bent. Have a little bit of gaffing between your legs. And just let them go side to side here. So this is working now the obliques, the waist. So you want to come as far as your biting point. So until you feel that tension through the waist. So it's like you're kind of rolling off of one glute and onto the other. The legs don't need to come to the floor, of course. If you were pregnant, you could come up onto your forearms and do this movement. So you're going to do two more sets of toe taps, and in between the toe taps, we're going to interchange with this oblique exercise. So if you want that add-on, you can extend the top leg as you come over. So as you're coming to the right, you extend the left leg. As you come over to the left, you extend the right leg. And then maybe when we do the second or third set, you might be ready to have the legs long, both legs. But that is much more challenging. So just be mindful of how it feels for you this morning as we're warming. So we're going to come back through centre, come back to those toe taps. So this time, we're going to do a diagonal cross with the foot. So I want you to imagine that you're bringing the toes, so the left toes to the right side of your mat and the right toes to the left side of your mat. Okay, so just a slight variation. Again, if you were heavily pregnant, you could come up onto your forearms, you could do the toe taps here and you can do the windmill here. Okay, but just a smaller range of motion. So let's set up into neutral. Bring those knees in over the hips. Check the head's comfortable, neck's nice and free. And we'll go with alternate toe taps, but diagonally. It's as if you're kind of drawing a, a shape of an X in the air. You should feel slightly different muscles working in the lower abdominals, but also we're working the more into the waist this morning with these two. So breathing out on the effort as the toe lightly touches and then breathing in as you reset the knees back over the hips with a little bit of gap. Keep the shoulders rooted into the floor so the upper body doesn't really move at all effort is the abdominals and the lower back, uh, lower body, sorry, not the lower back, <laughs> lower back should be in contact with the floor, so hopefully you can feel these starting to work, so let's do four, three, two, and one, and then either just hug the knees in if you need a little rest, or let the feet fall down to the mat, Reset, knees over hips, the windmill, arms rooted into the mat, T-shape, and then we can come over to one side, really slow the movement down, so you can find time under tension, and then over to the other side. Remember your options, keeping the legs bent, level one, alternate leg extends and lengthens, level two, as you come over, it's the top leg that would lengthen. And remember, you're constantly working the core by not letting the legs come over into a full twist, into a full supine twist. Option level three is to take the legs, the levers long, and a full windmill rotation. work with a level that's right for you today. Let's do two more each side, so four, three, 
four in total. Nice and controlled. And then just bring them in. Have a little hug of the knees or rest. And then one more set of toe taps, okay? So this time we're just going to change the shape of the foot. So we're going to flex our feet. And we're going to bring the heel down to the floor instead of the toes. So changing the shape of the foot, as I've said in previous classes, just changes the sensation, changes the muscles that we're working. So knees are over hips. And then we'll come back to our third set of windmills. So when you're ready, bring those knees up. Think about that real strong engagement through the abs as well as the neutral pelvis and then we're going to flex our feet so bring the toes back to the shins and then just toe tap down so you can do just a normal toe tap like we did at the beginning and then we'll change it up halfway through and we'll do that diagonal toe tap as well so be careful not to draw the, the thighs in over the chest So if you want to make this a little bit more challenging, try and touch the heel a little bit further down the length of your mat, so a little bit further away from you. So it's almost like you're lengthening the leg out slightly. And then go into that figure of X, so that shape where you bring the left heel to the right edge of the mat, right heel to the left. over the hips and choose your level for your oblique windmill sweeps. So remember the slower you go and the more you hold the legs and pause when you bring them across the body, the harder the muscles have to work. So getting a nice little massage in between to the lower back as you roll through and then root that opposite shoulder down into the floor. So then three sets of toe taps this morning working the deep abdominals so low lower abdominals and then the waist working the waist this one three sets of these Maybe on the last few, whatever level you're on, maybe you try and either, if the legs are bent, hover and hold for a little bit longer, an extra second or two. Or if the, leg, um, if the legs are long, or one leg's long, can you stretch the, the toes a little bit further away to the side body? You really feel that waist have to engage. So let's do four of these, four more. Take your time. Great, and then just rest. So either just let the feet come down to the mat or just hug the knees in over the chest, just let the lower back relax, take a few breaths. It's our first little section completed, so well done, you're a third of the way through already. So we're going to 
go back to one of my favorite exercises at the moment, um, known as the teaser in Pilates. If you practice yoga with me regularly, then it's kind of like a boat, I suppose. So you're gonna start from a lying position and I'm gonna have the knees over the hips and then ever so gently bring yourself up, oh that was hard today, into a little boat. Now to start with, you could, if you struggle to come up, you can catch hold behind the thighs. So this is preparing us really for our roll-ups in Pilates and roll downs, but particularly the roll-up. So you can catch behind the, the thighs and just use a little bit of momentum to get you up, okay? And the legs can stay bent. If you want a level two, then try and come up and then you might lengthen your legs, okay, at the top. So you come up to this V shape with the back and the lower body and then you lengthen your legs out then you bend the legs and then you lower yourself back down so the whole of the head and the, and the back comes to meet the floor before you come back up level three you know where I'm gonna go with this if I can do it this morning we're gonna bring ourselves up try not to hold on I cheated then and then bent legs extend don't worry if your hamstrings are tight and you've got somewhere in between a bent and a straight leg, that's cool. And then soften the knees and slowly lower down, okay? Now, if that's too much, for whatever reason, you don't want to rock and roll, come onto the forearms, bring yourself into a forearm toe tap, okay, without the coming um, back and forth on the spine. So choose your level this morning and we're going to of course find our neutral, we're going to think about that brace and we're going to try as far as possible to move slowly so we're using our abs and we're not using a, um, well the momentum of the body really, the swinging approach. So you Brace, you come up, you lengthen, you soften the knees, and then you let everything come back down. Take a moment, take a breath in, roll up, lengthen, soften, roll down. So it's probably two full breaths. Inhale as you come through to seated, exhale as you lengthen the legs, Inhale as you soften the legs again and exhale as you meet the floor. So take your time and take the right level for you. And as you get tired, don't be tempted to rush these. Otherwise your abs get tired. So if you want an add-on, I'll show you how you can make it a little bit more challenging. I'm going to bring yourself up, lengthen, and try and stretch to the opposite outer edge of your foot, sole of the foot. And then you can roll down and then you can switch sides. So you roll up, you extend, you stretch, soften, roll down. Roll up, lengthen, stretch, soften, roll down. We'll just stay with level one. Level one, you catch hold of the thighs and you can keep the legs bent. You don't have to do that full extension. You can just hold the static hold. And then lower yourself back down. So this is level one. Legs remain bent. The whole way through. Lift up, open the chest. Gently lower down. Keep breathing here. You can do four more, whatever level you wish.
One more. And relax. Draw the legs in. Gently massage. Just float the arms out. And before we come up, let's take a supine twist. So that completes our, our ab work. So bring the legs over to one side. Just let them rest now. Should feel a nice stretch through the back and the spine. You can turn the gaze, float the head if you wish. And then slowly move through neutral over to the other side. Great, so we're going to bring ourselves up and over to the side. So this is section two, where we're going to do some more work on our waist, our side body, our obliques, and then we'll conclude with a posterior chain, our back, um, the third section. So you want to lie yourself down on one side. You can lie down onto the tricep, or you can prop the head up. When you glance down, shoulder, hip, ankle stacked okay so you've got your your pelvis now hip bone stacked lower hip bone and then the top hip you can if you want take some extra blanket or cushion underneath the lower hip if you find this if your mat's thin and you find this work challenging you're going to bend um or uncomfortable rather than challenging you're going to bend the knees bring them in front of your um body upper body and we're going to start with the clam. So we've done this before, but quite about a month or so ago. You're going to open the top leg, okay, like you're sort of opening, like the hinge on a door. Keep the feet rooted together. So you might want to point or flex the foot. Keep them together and then close them. And as you open and close in this sort of fashion, you want to think about engaging the muscles in the inner thigh, but also in the muscles in the butt, okay? So let's go. So we open, we resist, we squeeze as we do it. So you can adjust if you feel you want to bend the legs a little more or you want to support that extra, like lower hip bone. And you want to keep the feet together and you're opening from the hip as wide as you can with the, the knee, the top thigh, but don't let yourself roll back, okay? So you're keeping that pelvis and the hips facing forwards. So you can go nice and slow or you can go a little bit quicker with me. Just think about that resistance and the muscles that you're working. This top hand can just support your balance. four more of these so they're known as a clam so four three two and one you're going to keep it open you're going to hold a static clam this top arm can extend up really think about engaging through the um, abdominals the pelvic floor so squeeze just checking the clock the timer squeeze the outer thighs the glutes Time and detention, five, four, three, two, and one. This top leg is going to come over. You might be able to catch hold of the ankle, but you don't necessarily need to. Just bend it and pop it over the lower leg. The lower leg is long. We're now going to work the inner thigh, which is a tricky area to, to work. We're going to flex the foot. The foot's going to be 
inched away from the uh, mat and you're going to lift and lower, lift and lower. Doesn't have to be like super, super, super high. We're not looking for a really high lift. We're, if you need an option, you let the leg come down to the mat each time and touch down and then reset. If you want that advanced option, you're hovering the mat. You're not letting it come down and keeping it under that constant tension. So really engage those muscles. Exhale as you lift, inhale as you lower. Ten, eight, six, four, three, two, and one. Don't let go. We're going to lift it up. We're going to pulse for ten, for nine, for eight, for seven, for six, for five, for four, for three, for two for one. Lovely. So you should have felt that in the inner thigh, hopefully. Now lengthen both of your legs out long. Okay, so zip them up like you have sort of glued the legs together. And you're going to lift them simultaneously, so as one, and then let them come down. Again, option level one, you let them touch the mat and you have that rest, intermittent rest in between. Level two, you can hover them away from the mat, just an inch away. So the body, the waist, the obliques are working the whole of the time, okay? So just make sure that you haven't rolled backwards or forwards on the bowl of the pelvis. So just glance down, just set yourself up beautifully long. To make this more challenging, um, advanced, you can pop that top arm on your top thigh if you want to challenge your balance this morning. So let's go. We inhale, we, we breathe, we lift up, and then we lower. So either touching down or hovering. Squeeze, lower. Remember it's that hold up and that pause that's going to work the body. So don't be in a rush. These are amazing exercises for sculpting the waist. So we hinge. This is, apart from the teaser that I made you do earlier, this is probably one of my, my favorite oblique exercises. It's not easy, but it definitely sees results. So remember, if you are feeling it, if you're getting cramped in the lower thigh, whatever it is, just bend the knees, just bring them together, just massage through, have a little rest, and then lengthen and reset and come back in. There's no harm in that. It's better to work with integrity in the movement and the exercise and the breath. So don't hold on to the breath as you get to the top of the move because it's getting harder. You should be able to start this feeling this now, hopefully. We're going to do four more and then we're going to hold it up and pulse. Okay, then we hold up and we pulse for 10, for 9, for 8, for 7, for 6, for 5, for 4, for 3, for 2, for 1. Beautiful. Just bend the legs for a little rest. So we've done our clam, working the outer glute and the hip mobility. We've done some inner thigh work and then we've done some side waist oblique work as well. So you've just got one more exercise on this side, okay? Just want you to do a static 30 second plank hold, side plank hold. So you can be on the forearm, you can come up as high as the hand if you want to. You're going to stack the body, either stagger the feet or stack. If you want an option, come down onto the lower knee. So you can be here, that leg down or top leg, that's probably a better option for pregnancy. So you choose, the legs can be long and stacked or staggered. So we're going to start now. Top arm lengthens up, 30 seconds, breathe. 
squeeze the butt, squeeze the thighs, and lift out the shoulder up into the side waist. So it's not long, you've already done 10 seconds. I'm molting today onto my mat. So we've done 20 seconds, you've got 10 seconds left. Push into the edges of the feet, you're in a full plank. And that's it, amazing. Shake out through the wrist or the shoulder, flip yourself around. We do all of that on the other side and then we lie on our belly, or all fours if we're pregnant. And we can conclude with our posterior chain, so we're not far off. So, let me just adjust my mic. Hopefully you can still hear me. Right, so one long line, and we start with our clam. So we bring the knees in front, you know the drill now. So you can lie down if you prefer with the head. Open, squeeze, and resist. So keep the feet in contact with each other. It might take a couple of movements to, to get the legs in exactly the right position for you. You're kind of engaging this glute, you're opening as far as you can with the hip hinge and the mobility, but not as far as it means that you start to roll back or that you lose that connection with the feet. Okay, so that's your guide. So think about that pause at the top of the movement and then the resistance as you bring the thighs together you've got inner and outer thighs working but working on that top leg so squeeze and resist you can try a few without that hand in front of you it's easier with the legs bent Okay, let's do four more, three more, two, and one. Lovely. So that leg's going to come in front now, and you're going to extend and lengthen your bottom leg. So this is our inner thigh extension. So remember, level one, the toe touches down. Level two, you hover the outer edge of the foot away from the mat. So the lower is as controlled as the lift. And it doesn't need to be a really large movement. Just enough so you can really feel the muscles working. So this might be when you need that extra padding under the bottom hip. If you've got a thin mat, no carpet, you're on a wooden surface, you could roll your mat, you could put a thin blanket underneath. Because you often people say to me when we when they first do this exercise that they find it, it can be quite painful on the lower hip bone if you're quite um, you know, if the hip bone's quite protruding perhaps. So we're gonna pulse it up now, so we're gonna lift it up. And pulse for 10, for 9, for 8, for 7, for 6, for 5, for 4, for 3, for 2, for 1. Lovely, legs long, so hinge from the waist this time, the legs are almost like uh, metaphorically glued together. You hinge up as one unit and you lower and control as one unit. You can touch down in between or harder option, you hover the heels, harder option still, the top arm is on the top thigh. Okay, so you pick your choice. And let's go. So hinge, pause, climb under tension and control as you lower. Inhale, rise, squeeze it in. Exhale, control it as you lower down. Inhale, rise. Exhale, control as you lower. Four more. And then 
then this time we're going to hold the legs up and we're going to pulse it at the top of the movement for 10 really small pulses okay so get ready zip the legs up lift 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 and 1 great so you're going to bring yourself up into that side plank variation level one on the knee extend that top leg arm can be above the shoulder you could lift that top leg if you wanted a halfway option so that's level one level two you can be on the hands you could be on the forearm staggering those feet and then level three the feet are stacked okay we're going to go 30 seconds starting from now so really draw the navel in push up out of the forearm or the hands so you're not taking too much weight in the shoulder you're lifting out of the side body the waist and we're already halfway Keep breathing. Beautiful. Three, two, and one. Excellent. So anyone who's expecting, you're going to come on to all fours. And you're going to extend in a moment, opposite arm and leg. And then for the second exercise, you're going to go into that X movement, okay? The rest of us are going to come and lie all the way down onto our tummies now. For the last little section working the back um, posterior chain so get um, yourself comfortable here so the feet are hip width if you get any discomfort in your lower back your sacral area then you can take the feet even wider than hip width so play around with that just a little tip there so the feet are relaxed they're glued into the mat you're engaging your butt okay and we're going to take our arms into a like a Y, part of a Y shape, okay? So we're going to lift alternate leg and arms. So we squeeze the glutes and we lift maybe left leg, right arm, or right leg, left arm. We find that time under tension and then we lower down. So it's alternate swimmer. So right leg, left arm lower control movement so you can always do this on all fours if you find that you prefer you, you know you find it claustrophobic let down or obviously if you there's a reason why you shouldn't lie on the tummy at the moment it's the same exactly the same exercise so we're not thinking about the height of the lift we're thinking about the length and extension out of the two levers. So let's do four more. So you should feel the muscles in the back starting to kick in to support you. Great, so that's your four. So this time we're going to come into that X shape that we painted with the toe taps. So still opposites, we lift, we open out, we come back through neutral and we lower down. So it's two breaths, I'll show you one more time. You lift on the inhale, you open out into the X on the, on the exhale, you inhale back through neutral and then you lower down on the exhalation. Okay, so join me now. So you can do exactly the same thing on all fours. Inhale lengthen forwards open out on the exhale inhale control on the lower inhale exhale opening into the x inhale control it and lower it just continue with your own rhythm if for some reason you don't like the the x never work through pain so if you're struggling with sciatica and it kicks in at this point, then just stay with the neutral movement. You don't have to, to open out into that X. We're challenging the muscles in the hip flexors and the hips, really, and the mobility here. 
You can always just work on the lower body or work on the upper body if it's becoming too much. So we're going to do four more of these movements. Slow and controlled. One more. And rest down, just rock the body, lower body, side to side, let the lower back relax, forehead to the earth. Great, so we're going to do a flutter kick, okay, to finish our posterior chain work. Then we're going to do a static plank hold, and then I'm going to stretch you off, so you're virtually there, so hang in there. So you're going to rest your forehead on it on the mat or on the forearms and you're going to make sure you've got that distance between the feet that is comfortable through the lower back. So hip width or wider. You're going to point the feet and you're going to flutter the legs long like you're kicking in a front crawl motion in the pool. So remember the movement is coming right from the top of the thigh, from the hip. You're not bending the legs and you're trying to lift them off of the mat. So. Let's brace the core and think about tucking the tailbone slightly, lift the legs and start to flutter kick. So you can do this slowly or quickly. If it's too much, you can just go back to that alternate leg lift that you just did in the previous exercise. So keep kicking, keep engaging the glutes. Keep breathing and timing us. So think about that full length and extension at the legs. Five more seconds. And one. Beautiful. Hands underneath the shoulders. Sit back into child's pose. Just give your back a little rest from those three exercises. You can gently roll from side to side in child's. That can release tension. Amazing work guys. So we're going to do a plank hold. Remember your options. Knees down. All fours. That's your level one. Level two. You bring the pelvis slightly further forward and you're on your knees. Level three. You're lifting the knees. Okay. You could do it on the forearms if you preferred. We're going to do a 45 second hold, we did 30 seconds I think the week before, so I'm building you up to a minute plank hold, some of you might be, able, might be there already, so feel free to hold it for longer, let's begin. So we really squeeze those abs, brace the glutes wherever you are, and this is the last thing we're going to do, and then we're going to stretch it off, so hang in there. If you need a rest, have a little rest, shake out and then reset. So we're coming up to 30 already. That's your 30 seconds. If you want that extra challenge, you can gently bring the weight forwards and back, rocking on the toes, shoulders over wrists, approaching 45 seconds. Keep breathing. Three, two, one. I just realised I timed a minute, not 45. You did amazing. Ah, that's my fault. So, rest in child's pose. Vertex back on heels, knees can be wide. Rest over the body. Come on to the fingertips, stretch both arms forwards. Now stretch for the shoulders, the upper back here and then take the hands over to one side stretching into the waist and then over into the other side either on hands I'm um, just kneeling if you're pregnant I'll show you the option in a second rest of you onto your forearms push through the forearms and feel that beautiful stretch through the abdominals it's like a sphinx pose 
Otherwise, kneeling, and just think about that uplift to get that stretch through the abs. And then push yourself up from your sphinx, come to kneeling, take the hand either to the hip or maybe to the floor, stretch over, other side, stretching over. Great, and then interlace the wrists, round through the back, come into your cat stretch, and a little bit of mobility for the wrists, fold the wrists through, lengthen the arms out, and then do that once more again. Great, and then open up, arch the back, and let's repeat that. So, other wrist on top, round the back, navel draws in, nice cat stretch, couple of wrist stretches, the wrists come through the centre, you extend the arms, then back, then open up, arch the back, lift the chin, give yourself a well deserved clap. Thank you very much for joining me this morning, my name is Jackie, uh, you'll find lots of Pilates and yoga classes on there from myself um, from two months ago. <laughs> so I hope you're staying safe. Have a great week. I'll be back Saturday morning and I think you've got Danny for tonight for Cardio Combat.